All right, Mike, um, welcome to the Accidental Entrepreneur. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate Andrea introducing us. Um, she brings a lot of very uh, interesting and, and nice and wonderful guests who have good stories to tell to share with people. Um, but today is an interesting day because um, you have an interesting story to tell. Now, we're going to talk about your book, um, Crash and Rise, right? Uh, but th this is, and your, your whole situation and your paddle border and your speaking and all that kind of stuff, but the whole story, which you'll tell me in a minute and your background and where you grew up and what you did before that was pretty recent, right? The, the things of the medical issues that you've had, right? Yeah. So first of all, thank you for having me. It's no, nice to, it's glad you can nice join me. And, um, and yeah, no, I think at the, you know, at the heart of the story, at the, you know, the core of the book of, you know, who I am, um, it's a story of an entrepreneur um, and the struggles that we face as entrepreneurs, the sure. ups and downs, um, you know, the failures and the lessons learned from them and what we take with those and what we do with them. Right. So, um, no, I, I grew up in Toronto. Um, just, you know, just north of the border, just on top of New York. Okay. And I, uh, I, I fell, I, I fell into entrepreneurship. Um, you know, I think often it chooses, it chooses you. Yeah, well, that's the name of the podcast, right? You accidentally yeah. end up in business. What was your first um, endeavor? Do you remember? Yeah, so the first was was the paddleboarding business. Um, I had um, an eat, pray, love moment, and I went <laughs> to I went to India to find myself. You actually have a picture of her in the book, don't you? The the uh, author me, of Eat, Pray, Love. Me and Liz Gilbert. Yeah, yeah. It came, it came full circle in the right. end, <laughs> uh, which is pretty which is pretty cool. Um, but but no, I you know. I thought I was, I was, you know, struggling and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So I went to, I went to India and, and I, you know, I wanted to figure out where I was going to go um, professionally and, and personally. Was this like after college or like, at what point did you say, I don't know what yeah. I'm going to do with my life? So, so I, so I went to college and, the, and then there was this kind of period of just, you know, working, working jobs. Um, right. But well, what'd you study in school? I took public relations and advertising. Okay. So it was so general. Public, yeah. So it was a background in marketing. I did yeah. my, um, I did my placement and worked at, um, actually it's the number one public relations agency in Canada. Oh. Um, this year. Um, they do, they specialize in, um, uh, special events um so sure. so working with clients like Cadbury sure. and really interesting stuff I'm sure but, they went through a lot of challenges during the pandemic <laughs> it's being in a, doing yeah. a lot of events right. um so so while I was there you know I I'd taken up paddleboarding as as a hobby yeah um now, I'm totally ignorant is paddleboarding like big in Toronto I I don't think of Toronto as like like where do you paddleboard in Toronto? You're not on the coast, right? So, 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 so we have a, you know, we we have 97 miles of lake separating us from New York State. Okay, there you go. So we've got one of the biggest Great Lakes um, in the country, um, and we're right on the waterfront. So it had taken off. There was a big boom, um, and I'd done my research. I thought, okay, this is the fastest growing water sport in North America. There's currently 10 businesses out there. Okay. There is there is room for and and this is this is growing. Um, and while I was in India, I just kind of had this light bulb moment. I was standing on the Ganges River and I saw these uh, lotus flowers floating. Mm -hmm. It was cool, and they were putting candles in them. And I thought, I want people, I, I want that. I want to light up the water. I want to give experiences. Yeah, and I want people to be the candles, and I want pal the paddleboards to be the lotus flowers, and I want them to just light it up. And it shine. was like a vision. It came to you. You're like, this makes yeah. sense now. Yeah. Yeah. So then, I, so when I came home and I put everything into everything into 
um, operation. I, I went and, you know, got certified and got the equipment and set up. Set up right. Business. You didn't just open a paddleboarding store. You did the research and did yeah, the research. Sure. There was, there was SWOT analysis. There was graphs. There was charts. Right. I went into. Could you make money doing this? You got to figure it out. At least pay your bills. Right. You got to figure that yeah. part out. Yeah. Um, there was also the fear of, you know, like yourself, both of my parents are illegal. Um, so like my, my, my father's dear and Brockovich of Canada, um, okay. so so was, liability so was, adverse. So I was like, how are they going to react? Like, right. I'm totally abandoning all my formal education. But at the same time, I took all of the public relations and all of the marketing that I'd taken in school and I just applied it. So yeah, I had sure. an advantage that other paddle boarding businesses didn't. Right. Um, and because of that, um, I learned to work with bloggers and influencers and partner with organizations that would elevate my brand, yeah. um, putting me, um, for instance, one of them was the Canadian Safe Voting Council. So sure. much, I don't know if you do it with Memorial with Memorial Day, but Victoria Day is this weekend in Canada Day. And it it signals the opening of boating season. When oh, really? When everybody starts getting on the water. Right. So, so I approached them and said, I know you do a media day where you do a press call for all of the national media um, to do safety demonstrations and all of this. To kick um, off the season, basically. That's what Victoria yeah. Day does. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. To put out safety messages. Yeah. Of, you know, Don't no drown when you're out on the lake. Yeah. And and I called them up and I said, You you need a paddleboarder to do safety demonstration. They didn't and have one? Said, they didn't have one. Ah, oh, good. Okay. And and suddenly I became their guy. So I was yeah. all over the media. Um, I'm sure the other 10 paddleboarding companies were like, why didn't we think of that? You know? Yeah. They were probably like, who is this guy coming in? <laughs> <out? laughs> no. Well, you're a marketing guy and you're a public, a publicist and you understand. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, well, that's but, good. But that really, you know, working with, working with bloggers and working with the media, it's, you know, by the end of my first season, I was ranked number one in the province. So, so it worked. Yeah, because you were everywhere. Yeah. Everybody saw you, and that's what's going on in the world now. You can't really just put an ad in the newspaper and expect people to show up no. for paddleboarding lessons. Not anymore. Not yeah. anymore. Right. No, times have changed. Yeah. So I'm sure with your parents, though, being lawyers, they're like, wait a second, you're going to start a business. You're going to put people out on paddle boards, out on a lake. Isn't that like dangerous? You know, people get hurt, die, <laughs> drown, you know? No, absolutely. <laughs> there, were like, there, were, there were many questions, but there was a lot of support. There was a lot of support. support and I find, you know, entrepreneurs hang out with entrepreneurs. Um, so, yeah, like-minded. Yeah, we're all kind of right brain, want to create, yeah. build things. Yeah. So so a lot of my friends, even though I wasn't there yet, a lot of my friends who I surrounded myself with at the time had started their own businesses. Oh, whether, okay, good. Whether it was, um, you know, manufacturing or construction or you but know. you had friends who could be mentors and you could bounce ideas off of. And But I'd also want to say, though, I always tell people, you know, got to write a business plan, do that stuff. All the stuff you mentioned, SWOT analysis and all that stuff, that's business planning. And that's what you're doing. So people listening, don't just jump on a paddleboard and think you're going to, you know, start a business. You still have to do the research and learn how to market it. And because if not, then you just have equipment and your guy in a lake just standing there. Right now, how let me go back in time. How when was this when you started? You came back from India, and then when, when about was it when you started working on the paddleboarding business? Um, 20, 2016, 2015. Okay, so only like six years ago. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. you're a young guy. I'm a lot older than you, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 2015, and that's really when you just started the research. You started the and and had you, when you approached the uh, the boating organization. The safety organization what when was that were you open already um i don't think i was even open okay i did it i did it in advance um because you know it just created you, you as an authority right on you don't need a business you could write yeah no i i just approached them and said you know i'm certified with the national organization as an advanced level flat water instructor and that's all they needed to know um because they didn't have any other they didn't have other people approaching so i put myself perfect 
Yeah, you became the expert, right? In the spotlight. Sure. Yeah, it makes sense. That's what we want to do, right? We want to be thought leaders in our business because then people are like, well, I, I got to talk to Mike. He obviously knows what he's doing. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, no. sure. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was, um, it was, it was great. I, um, a lot of lessons learned, um, you know, it didn't, it was great while it lasted. Yeah. Um, Did and things and now- really jump from there. I mean, people signing up for paddleboarding lessons and Really took Absolutely. off? It did. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, no, I was terrified. The The second season, um, there was an ice storm the second week of May. Wow, and, that's late. And I was, think, and I was thinking... Um, Even in Toronto, that's late, right? It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, like, this is, this is terrible. There's, you know, ice and snow and right. shoveling and, and, and I'm, I'm ex- like, I need people on the water. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it's seasonal and it only goes until the end of, um, end of September, early October. Um, and I'll talk about what I did to, to, to make that year, year round. Okay. Um, but it's, but I, I was panicking and I was thinking, what am I going to do? And then higher power, whatever, uh, stepped in and, and, and it was one of the hottest. Really? Weekends. So it just turned, everything turned around. <laughs> That's fun. Um, so, so no, no stressing about things that you don't need to be stressing. About. Right. That you can't control. Yeah. Yeah. No, you just got to solve the problem. Yeah. You can pray to God, but you still should row toward shore. You know what they say. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So that was your second, but that was only your second season, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the things I did though, was I developed, um, I talk about mentorship and, and relationship building in Crash and Rise um, and, and how important it is. So one important. Of things, one of the things that I did was I contact I, I developed this this friendship, this relationship with another paddleboarding company who specialized in sunset experiences. Okay. It's very similar to what I did. And uh, they were located in Laguna Beach in California. Okay. So in October, uh, I just shut down for my season and I flew out there to set up a business partnership with them, which would have had me been doing corporate retreats. Um, so in the off season, you could take people out there because they're not going to paddleboard in Toronto yeah. in November. Or, or, just market, or just market towards corporations in California. Right. Um, you know, there's... There's a lot of there's a lot of money out in San Diego, so and a lot sure. of a lot of people who who need um, you know breaks and mental health, and, and there are a lot of companies who are very focused on that. So so I thought, okay, well this is there's a, there's opportunity here. So I went out there and and we set it up, and and I was on you know on top of the world, thinking, okay, well I'm going to be in Toronto. Um, Perfect. You know. March through October, and then I'll go out to California, and and everything will be great. And uh, and then I came home and I got sick. Yeah, and that was 2017, so, right? 2017, 18. That was 2000 and, um, 2018, November. Yeah. So let's talk about the your your condition because it wasn't like you got the flu and you didn't feel well. You came down with this rare condition, right? This rare, disease. Rare neurological condition. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, so essentially what it is, is it's a reactivation of your chicken pox as shingles, uh, attacking your system. So when we get chicken pox as a kid yeah. or as children, uh, it lays dormant in our system after we get it. And, and then it reemerges when we're adults sometimes as shingles. Yeah. That's why we all get vaccinated when I just got vaccinated, I don't know, last year sometime. Yeah. 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 Um, and most people, you know, when they get shingles, it's, it's painful. It's, yeah. it's excruciating. So, so this particular condition is very specific to your eye or your ear. So when it affected me, it attacked my ear only and my ear, um, it, you know, it's connected to your facial nerves. So my face right. drops. 
my face collapsed on there. Yeah. All the nerves shattered. And right. it looked like I had a stroke. Right. And my face. It's like sick. Bell's palsy. You like lose like half of your face. It, I've got relatives that go through that. It, it was, um, I would say it was more extreme. Um, Did it come it, on it, acutely? Like you just woke up one day, you're like, oh my God, what? What's going on with my face? It happened, it happened in five days. Wow. Um, the progression. Even so, like your ear was bothering you and you're like, what the heck is going yeah. on? Yeah. So, you know, it's it's painful. I'm going to start taking some Tylenol. Um, I'm going to, and then, you know, by the afternoon on the first day, it's more painful. So I'm going to start doubling up on Yeah, you kind of, right. You don't run to the doctor. You're like, oh, I'm probably having that infection. And then, and then you go to the walk-in clinic and, and they say, you know, what have you been doing lately? And you're like, oh, I've been surfing in California. And, and they say, oh, well, you must have a dirty water in the ear. Infection. Right, swimmer's ear or whatever, right? Um, yeah. Um, and then the pain just progressed. And I remember driving to the hospital and, and I saw the, you know, the circles with the lights. Um, the red was coming out of the circle. And, and I thought, and, and the road was... Um, the lines. You mean the traffic were, lights? Yeah. So the red, your eyes were doing something with the red. And and the and the yellow lines on the road weren't going, weren't weren't solid and weren't straight. And and I thought, okay, just just get to the emergency room. Right. And and what ended up happening was, um, I ended up going to three hospitals over five days, um, and ultimately why you because know, they couldn't die like they had no idea what you had test tests weren't run because they're um they conclude you know they medical anchoring happened um and they they concluded what the previous doctors had said and it just kept on going and they said oh yeah no that's and, right yeah yeah so they just you know diagnose diagnosis bias right um and and that just carried on until I finally had tests done and they said, you've missed the 72 hour window for treatment. So, uh, so there's only a 72 hour window to yeah. reverse what's happening. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, how yeah. would anybody even know to, I don't know how you can meet that window. Blood work, CT scans, um, you know, as. But you said you had, a, you thought you had an ear infection. Who's going to run blood work and CT scans in I know. three days. I know. So, so not only just my face, I went from being an athletic fit guy to yeah. needing to being looked after by my family. It debilitated I, your whole body? Because I couldn't walk. Oh, it it immobilized me. Yeah. So, so over the next year, I had to um, do extensive vestibular rehab therapy to retrain my brain how to, how to walk properly. Um, Does it affect your whole nervous system? As, Is that why? You know, yeah. Um, uh, yes, your your vestibular system in 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 here. Okay. Um, but I, I remember, you know, just sitting. There. It didn't really hit me when when it happened. What they were saying, I think I was in too much pain, and I just wanted it to stop. Yeah. But I remember them saying, "What do you do for work?" And I and I said I'm a professional paddleboarder, and just their react the reaction was just you're not doing that anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was you know that didn't really hit me. Um, I was you know pain's exhausting. Um, oh, so I think anybody who's even had a bad toothache can yeah you can, can't concentrate. Your brain doesn't process things. No. Um, one of the things that I did, and I think I talk about mentorship quite a bit in Diaries of the Unbalanced Paddleboarder Crash and Rise, is that um, one of the things that I did was I, I contacted somebody who had gone through what I had. Um, and I thought it was a very important thing to do with putting a face that I recognized on something so rare. So I Googled famous people, my condition, oh. and I found several politicians, uh, which I wrote to, which I never heard back from. Okay. And <laughs> I wrote to the founder of P90X, the global fitness. Yeah, um, I think I did and, that once, P90X. Almost and, killed myself. Uh, and Tony Horton has become, yeah. my he's, he's 
he's part of my book. Uh, okay. Um, and and he describes the pain. Like everybody's pain is different, but he describes it as having both of your kneecaps blown out at the same time for <sighs> months. Um, so I I was just very focused on 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 just getting through the pain. Yeah. I wasn't even t- I wasn't even thinking. Okay, I, I I've lost my business. I've lost everything. That came later, but that was a journey in itself. What, what what was the prognosis? Well, on the medical in the medical community, what they tell you at first, like you're going to be like so this for the rest of your life. Send you for an MRI to rule out brain damage. We're going to put you on steroids, and we're going to see if it works. Um, we are going to set up appointments for you to have balance testing. I didn't I didn't know that was a thing. Right. Well, you <laughs> just affected your inner ear, right? So it's clearly yeah. going to affect your balance, right? Yeah. So, so we're going to send you to a balance testing center. And I remember when I went there, I, I had to do testing and I was following a light with my eye to see, because when, when I move my head from side to side, I get dizzy and it's like spinning out on a carousel inside my head. Um, and I remember following the light and, and they came in afterwards and, and they, they actually said to me, what are they going to do with you? <laughs> um, and I said, I don't know. And what are you asking me that for? Yeah. Well, no, like, <laughs> That's not a very well, helpful question. No. <laughs> um, so, but no, but yeah, no, it was, it was, you know, a lot of testing. I went for, um, you know, I, I went and had my hearing tested. Um, sure. I, have amplified, I, have am, I have hearing loss and amplified hearing now. Yeah, because it was attacking your eardrum, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No. I'd never heard of this, that it comes from shingles. I'm glad I got the vaccine. Now, am I still, could I still end up with this, even though I've been vaccinated? If you've been vaccinated, no. You're good. So that's, there's a, get vaccinated if you've had chicken get vaccinated. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when you connect with Tony and you connect with other people and you start looking for people, didn't that give you kind of a, a vision of what your life could be as opposed to like being debilitated for the rest of your life? Because Tony wasn't, right? He came back from it. Yeah. So it put him in a wheelchair. Um, for a period of time, yeah. And, and he worked himself up and that gave me motivation of what was possible. Yeah. So another thing that I did was I, jo- I joined a Facebook group um, of people who have this um uh, several thousand okay and but it still and must be a small percentage of the population it, right it, it is yeah. um what i will tell you is that there are people who are you know i i'm coming up on my three year three year anniversary two three year anniversary this this fall um of of the diagnosis yeah it was in 18 uh, that's three years right of the main event yeah and um and there are there are people who are five seven ten twelve years in who who are not where i am who are not where tony is right um and I mean, I they're actually, still very debilitated very much um and and this is a thing that affects you on a spectrum level so, yeah i'm sure so in my, my case, my case was a very extreme case, but I attribute everything, all the positive things that have happened um, since that. It was, you know, it was, it was devastating. It was, it was crushing. Right. Um, there was a huge mental health component to it. Um, but on the other side of that, um, you know, I, I spent some time in a, cri- in a crisis center because I thought I was losing my mind, um, sure. being isolated and, yeah. and losing my identity of who I am and what I did. And, you know, there were, I, I couldn't look in the mirror at times. Right. And, um, but on the other side of that, I realized that I could do really tough things. I could go into a crisis center where there were people who were staying in there that were ordered to be there by the court. And I could go in and I could hold my own. Um, and I came out and four weeks later, I got back on the paddleboard when the doctor said I couldn't. Um, and a couple of weeks later, I got back on again for a few minutes, just sitting down. And it made me sick. Because um, of the balance. Me, yeah. Yeah, I was just sitting down. But 
I remember feeling like I was at home, um, even though I was spinning like I was on on a carousel. Wow. Um, and it knocked me out for days. Yeah. But I, but I just kept on at it and I worked myself back up um, incrementally um, until until the opportunity presented itself to pivot into a new business. And that was the, um, that was the invitation to compete at North America's largest inspirational speaking competition. Um, and you had never really done speaking up until that point or a little bit? I'd given a really bad valedictorian speech, um, <laughs> which, I'm sure a lot of, which I'm sure a lot of people remember as, right. being, as being terrible. But, um, but that was but probably I, before social media, so it's not out there in cyberspace, right? Thank goodness. I hope it never surfaces. <laughs> That's um, but but no, it was it was it was good. I I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm I'm recovering. I'm at home. I'm not, you know, this is at the end of the summer. I'm not paddleboarding. I I don't have all I have to do is sleep and rest my body and and heal and and do my physiotherapy. So I've got all this time. So, so I applied and, um, and they came back and they said, yes, we want you. And you're gonna be competing against 10 TED Talk speakers. Or Jesus. Professional motivational yeah. speakers. Um, you know, these are, these are people who've been on Goldcast and had millions of views and, and power of positivity and on huge platforms. Right. You know, like, like power positivity has like 35 million subscribers and they, you know, they take these and they put yeah. them out. And, um, and I thought, okay, well, great. I didn't know. I didn't know that's what I was getting myself. Right. Into. It's better that you don't know. Right. Cause you probably wouldn't yeah. have done it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's so funny. I talk about, you know, I, I felt in many ways I was walking a road and building it as I was going. Yeah. You know, Steve Jobs talks, Steve Jobs says, you know, you can only connect dots looking back. No. Right. Looking. Always. Yep. Yeah. That's um, life's a journey that you build as you go. And and I completely agree with that. So so I crafted, you know, this six minute speech. I used my experience, but I made it universal so that it wasn't my condition. It was it was anybody struggling with business with their love life with their conditions with right whatever so for a broader audience absolutely yeah um and i used i i called it i said yes and it's about saying yes to yourself when you don't think you can um and and confidence building yeah and and win building and um now do you think going and, through this because that's right on point with what i was just going to ask you that you surprised yourself in terms of like you're tougher than than you thought you I mean because obviously you know none of us like prepare to go through something like that it like you said it happens and then you find out how resilient and how tough you are because you yeah. you already interacted with people that are not looking good after 12 years because they probably don't have the, the 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 toughness that you did so did you yeah surprise no, yourself I, I think I did surprise myself I definitely surprised myself. I think we all surprise ourselves when when we are put into the position, you know, when we have our backs to the wall. And, and yeah, most of us are tougher than we think. We realize, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you know the fighter in us comes out when we need it's it. Human nature, right? We're at our best when things are worst. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and now, over time, with what's happened, um, that fighter, that you know, you know. I, I, I have that out every day. Yeah, uh, sure. So, well, it's, in, it's part of your, your being now. It's part of the fabric of who you are because that you've, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. You have to, you have to be that way. But so if you, but if you, um, um, if you look at all these things that you've done and, and, you know, where you've come from, do you think that, you know, that, you mentioned before about um, mentorship and, you know, um, even using advisors for your business or whatever you're doing, that does allow us a little bit to look down the road with a little bit of foresight. Obviously, our situation is not the same as the person who's mentoring you, but, you know, as opposed to saying, well, let me see what's around that corner. They might say, I've been around that corner and this is what you might find, right? Absolutely. 
No, I think it's you know so important to to bring on advisors, to bring on mentors, to do masterminds. Yeah, masterminds um, are good. It, I just did an eight week program. Um, I'm starting another one. Um, yeah, that's how you meet some incredible people who you know you realize so, about yourself. Yeah, surround yourself with the people that are doing big things because your network is your net worth. Um, yeah, it's true, and. And amazing things can come from that. Um, I don't usually do masterminds because of because of what is being taught, because it's actually very it's more simple. about meeting the people and connecting. It's, it's more yeah. about meeting the people and connect. So, just for example, I did um, a media one um, recently. Mm -hmm. um, I already knew a lot of stuff about media. I already right. know that's not why you went, right? I know. I know they live on Twitter. I know how to leverage and amplify media if I need to. What I wanted to do was meet the people who were investing big money into the program because I thought, okay, those are people who some of them are going to have great, great connections. Um, and I wasn't wrong. Mm -hmm. um, one of the guys, it was, um, his name's Thomas. He's a comedian. And he opens up the crowd on Good Morning America and The View. And like you mean the crowd in the studio? Yeah. Like yeah. he, he, read them yeah, he all warms up the crowd. Yeah, I've seen guys like that. Yeah. And Tamron Hall and all those things. Um, so so you know, I, I built this real amazing friendship with him while we were in this group over here. Yeah, you wouldn't think you'd meet a guy like that at something like this, no. right? Yeah. But you do. And I met I met, you know, several other people very similar. But Thomas, you know, you know, because of that, I suddenly got invites to be interviewed by, you know, TV's The Bachelorette on her podcast. Thomas set that up. Um, yeah. He, he invited me to be on the post Oscar show for Good Morning America. Um, you know, doors, doors of opportunity. They open always do. Things. Yeah. I'm networking and... You know, no, yeah, yeah. Relationship building. Well, think about it. If you had been hanging out, let's call it hanging out, not networking, with you know people who had had your condition and really had and are just in wheelchairs and not really, you know, given up on life, you'd never get out of out yeah. of where you are. You know, you need to see a different vision and and see other people that have done it and say, well, yeah, of course it's possible. If they did it, why couldn't? Right? It's believing what's possible. I mean, that's ninety percent of the battle. I think. With, with anything, not just, you know, medical conditions. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's, it's, I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy to be where I am. I, I never, you know, it's so funny because while the world was pivoting, pivoting is actually a paddleboarding term. Um, yeah. Is it? it? When you stand on the back of the board and the, the front comes up and you okay. turn it very fast. Um, and, and it, it's a racing term. And, right. and, but it's a and, good analogy for what we just went through. Yeah. Yeah. I talk about pivoting in the book, actually. Um, but while the world was pivoting with moving to online, I was pivoting with moving to online and switching careers into, you know, speaking to businesses and corporations and schools. Right. And coming out with the book. And so, so it was like I was I was double double pivoting at the same right. time. Um, it was it's it's been a really amazing, interesting year. Yeah, you met some interesting people. So when you gave the speech about yes. the speech competition, first I'd like to know how it went, and also is that what eventually led to okay, well I got to put this into writing, I got to create a book to share my story with people. Right. So. Um, so I went in thinking, okay, well, I'm in a re I'm in really bad shape, um, but I but I talked myself up and I said, you know, I do have an advantage here, even though these people have done TED talks and and you know had you know been huge success and you know speaking at Google and all these companies, um, I had the advantage that I have time that they don't because they're out working. Yeah. And and I, I have all this time to write and I can write something really good. Um, 
so so I did. I, I wrote the speech and and then I and then I I rehearsed it three hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, you know what you're doing because that's your background. Yeah. I think my neighbors uh, probably thought I had lost my <laughs> mind because they were they were probably watching me sit on the porch, seeing my mouth just move because I was just sitting there rehearsing over and over and over for hours every night. Right. For months. For months. And um, and I went into that thinking, okay, you know, there's going to be three or four hundred people here. If you can uh, inspire or uplift, you know, three or four, then you've done your job. You've, yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, two of two of them were going to be my parents. So <laughs> right. um, they already had half. They already had half. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I walked away, I walked away with, with, with a win. Yeah. Were you um, still debilitated at that point? Were you in a wheelchair or? No. So I, so I was never on a wheelchair. I was using okay. a, I was using a cane. I, cane. I'd, come, okay. I'd come off using a cane. I did need help up the stairs. Uh, they did put a chair on the stairs for me, um, which I used throughout the performance when I needed to. Um, and that was hard with rehearsals because I didn't know, you know, when I was, when I, when I was going to need to. Right. Um, well, would you I, just I, suddenly get dizzy? Is that what would happen? And yeah. Yeah. Um, the light lights also really affect. Right. Because you're on stage, right? There's lights and stuff. Yeah. I did find that, you know, I couldn't see past the first row, which really helped. Um, That's probably for most people who are up on stage with big, bright lights. You can't see very far. No. Right. Um, so that did help. Um, but, but no, I was. I was, um, you know, I I went in there hoping to uplift a few, and and you know, it's been seen by millions of people now. So it's is know, it online? Is it available? It, it is. So very quickly, several several platforms put it up. So Jay Shetty, Ashton Kutcher's platform A Plus. Um, inner light media power positivity put it up to their 35 million subscribers so it's just generated millions of views around the world um, and you know through that on one hand it's connected me with people who are struggling sure and on the other end of it it's moved me into a completely new profession sure um, and opened the door to corporate speaking um you know i authored the book um i now i'm now a lifestyle expert with several apps um and and through that you know there are business opportunities because because of that of course um, so, so you know just different you know streams um you know don't don't put all your eggs in one basket have have multiple streams coming in right well i mean there's a lot to be said for building your personal brand right in multiple verticals and net networking 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 i don't care what you do all the people that i interview people have been through all kinds of different life experiences some harder than others some financial some physical all this stuff it's all about connecting with other people out there who they who help you who you can help you know, it all goes around the around around the circle, and I, I think that people don't realize the impact of getting out there. You know, you were very brave. To, I'm sure there's a lot of a lot of people wouldn't have just applied to the this con. It was a contest, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. No, it's like the American Idol. They 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 call me the Kelly Clarkson of it because of what I've done because of how I've leveraged. Did you it. win the competition? Or yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. So yeah, not no, only did you make a lot of connections, but winning, I'm sure, helped a lot too. No, the founders, no, I remember they they said the room had, and, and, you know, they they do this every few months. Um, oh, they do it all the time. And, and it's different themes. Mine was courage. Um, Perfect. And there were ten people competing, and it and it was about you know building, win building, and and saying yes to yourself when you don't think you can do something, and and where and where that can take you. Right. And um, and what it did was it actually set off a global movement of paddle boarders from all around the world. Right. Um, because I mean, everybody saw the video and the speech and everything. Video and, and they all started taking pictures and hashtagging. And, yeah, you put a lot of them in the book. 
Yeah. Right. No, Hashtag we, paddles up or paddle up. Yeah. Um, paddles no, up. Really, That's the term, yeah. right? It was, it was interesting because what I didn't realize was I was actually, when I said that line at the end of the speech, paddles up, um, I was giving an order without realizing it um, for people to come in and, and be a part of something. And, and I didn't realize that at the time that's what I was doing. Right. <laughs> but, but it is amazing what has, what has happened because of that. Um, and, and here we are, here we are, you know, a few years later and, and. But that wasn't really happenstance. It wasn't like you went on there, you had a good story to tell and you boom, you said you practiced like 300 times. I mean, you must have had this thing down cold to the point yeah. where it was so natural and it was, you knew it so well that it was very impactful. Yeah, no, my, I, I did bring on a coach for delivery. Um, somebody who had been through it before. Yeah, see um, another mentor, maybe, right? Um, absolutely. Uh, I think her, I think her in Crash and Rise, I talked about her a little bit. Yeah. And, um, and no, she, she, you know, she, she speaks on body positivity and she speaks with, you know, networks of women all around the world. Um, she's spoken with Lisa Nichols and, and Liz Gilbert and, and, and so many people. And she came up to me afterwards and she was like, that was very different than what we rehearsed. Where the heck did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> like, you were just dynamite. And I was like, I don't know. It was just like. It all I, came I, together I, that day. It, everything you'd been planning for. It was just a cathartic release. It yeah. was just all this energy that I had kept inside just came out. Yeah. And um and it and it and it worked. It did it. Um yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you mo you, you can't obviously run the paddleboarding business anymore, but and you probably don't need to, but do you paddleboard sometimes? I do. So so what I did, um, you know. I, I, I've worked myself up. I, I, I don't do it professionally anymore. Um, I do offer, you know, I, I speak to corporations on many things, like right? neurodiverse inclusivity, building winning teams, um, mental health, so, several topics. Uh, those, those are my favorite ones. Um, but I also offer corporate retreats to, you know, when, when companies bring me in, they also have the opportunity to do workshops with me. Um, so, so I have that op option as well. Um, this summer, I am actually attempting to become the first person with a disability to paddleboard from one, to cross international waters from one country to another. Um, so I'm paddleboarding from the US to Canada. Um, and it's going to take me three days. Three days? And Where are you crossing? Rochester. Oh, that's like near Niagara Falls. So how, how far, why does it take three days? Three, uh, because it's 97 miles. Oh, you can't just cross from like the American side and cross over to the Canadian side. You'll be there in like 20 <laughs> no, minutes. No, no. no we're, <laughs> we're, we're going to really challenge ourselves because I'm doing it for, for youth mental health. Okay. I, I became a mental health advocate and, and, and those organizations have really struggled this year. So I thought, you know, I, I did a fundraiser for them and raised several thousand dollars last year, but I thought, okay, well, this has really dipped. Like, like they're really, these organizations, the community organizations are really struggling. So let's just do something big and what's going to raise them a significant amount of money. The first person with a disability crossing from one country to another. That's a good um, way to do it. So what body of water are you crossing? Lake Ontario. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. that would make it long. So, so three so days. So what are you going to do a third of the way in? What, there's going to be a boat for you to sleep on? or It's going to be two support groups, two okay. support boats uh, with safety teams and media. So I believe right now we're, we're trying, you know, Red Bull Canada. It looks like Red Bull Canada is going to be on one of them. Um, I'm talking with Canadian Geographic, which is, you know, part of National Geographic. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I brought on PR companies and who specialize in this. And, and you're obviously and, training for this. You're not just going to, right? 
so I, I've had amazing corporate donors come on board already. Like we're not even really launching this until you know about a month from now, but I've had you know several thousand raised already, more than what was raised last year. Right. Um, I've had Starboard North America, which is the biggest board company in the world. Um, they're sending me their 2021 race board, um, all athletic apparel. It's going to look like, you know, like I'm you're racing. a, right. <laughs> um, but it's an amazing, yeah, but you'll have the right equipment to make it as comfortable, yeah. I guess, as it could but be. It's yeah. an amazing marketing opportunity for any corporation. Um, I've contacted 500 of the top law firms, mining companies, tech, insurance, real estate, all over the country. Um, asking them to come on as corporate donors. So right now I'm waiting, you know, four to eight weeks for them to come on board. Companies like, you know, GlaxoSmithKline, Deloitte. Uh-huh, sure. Um, so now it's just kind of a waiting game. And, uh, and August 22nd, it's go time. So, yeah. All right, well, th- this episode will probably come out in the next couple of months. So if you tell me what's like the best time for us to release it, when amazing <laughs> yeah absolutely and then we'll figure out what's because I'm, I'm always running a certain time behind with episodes but you know i adjust things people have a book coming out or they're doing but certainly if they're doing something for charity so we can get you know links in and our promotional stuff and then you know we can uh, mention everybody and how people can learn about it how people can participate yeah. and sponsor and no i think it's really interesting so i you know First person with a disability crossing international waters. When I thought about that, I'm like, okay, this is international headlines. Like I have a friend, Chris, who crossed from one country to another. He made the New York Times. This is an extension of that. So he didn't have a disability. He didn't have a disability. He did go, he did go across the Atlantic. I will give him that. He battled sharks. Um, he went across the Atlantic, like what, from the United States to Europe? From Morocco to Antigua. That's pretty far. It is pretty far. On a paddleboard? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. He's had a big he crew is, with he him. Is, he's, a, he's a friend of mine. He was the 2017 International Stand-Up Paddleboarding Man of the Year. And I'm the, I'm the 2021 International Standing, Stand-Up Paddleboarding Man of the Year. Nice. So, nice. so we you know, built, built this relationship. He's, um, no, he's been, he's been amazing support. And, um, but I, but I thought, okay, well, you know, this, you know, got all this hype, let's attach it to a good cause and raise a lot of money for them. Um, and, and do some good in a time where, where they could really, they could really help it, you know, community, community organizations. And because it's international, you know, while I'm supporting a Canadian organization, the international press, when that happens, I'm going to be sending people toward NAMI um, and the American, the American mental health organization. Sure. Um, And, you know, telling people, you know, get involved with your mental health organizations in your states and your communities. so I think, well, you know, if we all... were you always before this happened, right? You came out of college, you were like, I don't know what I want to do. I go to India, you figure out, oh, I want to do paddleboarding. Were you very, were you always like giving back and wanted to be involved in things? Or was that something that happened because of what you've experienced? So no, when I had my paddleboarding business, I, I shut down on Friday nights and I worked with um, an autism program. And I took out five families every night, every Friday, and and worked with and you know children who people who live with autism, um, they benefit from being around the water. They love water. Yeah, of course. Uh, m- most. Um, so so I wanted to work with kids and give them an opportunity. So so that was a big part of what I did. Um, and then because of where I went in my journey with the mental health story. Um, you know, I kind of came, came on board with, with Jack.org, you know, they're, they're Canada's number one leader in youth mental health. And I, I just started researching and I thought, you know, like youth are the future. So let's invest our dollars in, in youth yeah. and, and make sure that, you know, they're set. 
right um and that they're set up so that you know they're not experiencing all this stuff that that we're all that we're all dealing with um so i got involved with them um you know so it's always kind of been in your blood what before yeah. india did india change you a lot when you i think so yeah i think so i think it opened my eyes to to people struggling and to how you know people you know we're we're so lucky um you know with with this vaccine rollout and and what's going on right now yeah north america with with india is on fire they're a mess right yeah and and what's going to happen is you know this is going to rip through india philippines thailand africa for several years because they don't have access to to the vaccine distribution like like we have right um, but no, I think I think India really, really changed me. I think everyone should go to India. <laughs> I hear it's a challenge from a what's the word from a um, an eating healthy standpoint. <laughs> it is. is. Yeah. No, I, I um, no, there, I, have, I have some amazing. Well, I talk about India quite a bit in the book, um, but no, there was. Um, Eating, eating was definitely a challenge for me. Yeah. Um, you know, riding on Indian trains. I remember thinking, okay, I'm going to be on a train for 30 hours, and and eating what? might be a thing. <laughs> I, ended up, I ended up going to Subway sandwiches and getting four subs and bringing it on, bringing it on the train. Oh, they did have things like that, but yeah, yeah. no, there there was very, you know, in the big cities, there was definitely, you know, there was McDonald's. And there was Wendy's, and there was not Wendy's, but there was McDonald's and Subway and K- KFC's big over there. Um, yeah, I would think big KFC be bigger because they don't really eat meat, do they? Like beef. Um, yeah. So. So what, what's on the McDonald's hamburger? <laughs> uh, so so you know, there's only one province. You know, so they've got provinces like Canada instead of states. Yeah. Um, you know, every, every you know, it, it's like a different country. Um, there was only one province that I that I had steak. Um, the rest of them, you know, I remember being at a McDonald's and going um, in Delhi, and and looking at the menu and just and it just dawned on me there's no beef up here. It's, right. all, chicken. it's all chicken. Yeah, it's like in the KFC. Yeah, it's all chicken or vegetarian. Right. Um, um, but you know, there's you know different different. It was still places. McDonald's, you know different ways of life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Mike, um, I assume that people can get Diaries of the Un- Unbound Paddleboard or Crash and Rise on Amazon, right? They can get it on Amazon. It's also available. Yeah, so Diary, uh, Crash and Rise Diaries of the Unbalanced Paddleboarder is on Amazon. It's on Barnes & Noble, um, Books a Million, and you can also get it on on my have, website. Have you done the audible version? Did you do? So the second edition is going to be coming out in in the fall. Um, coming up, you know, the the anniversary will just be before Christmas. So so we're you're going to read the out. the book? Uh, no, I think I'm going to have James Earl Jones do. That's it. perfect. Yeah, I think you know he's he's got some time, hopefully. <laughs> um you know i'm still working out um i i don't i don't know i find you know you know i speak professionally but i i i, I don't watch myself I'm, I'm very much like an actor like i don't want to watch you know what I you get in your own head and you're just like yeah, yeah it's not good right yeah it's, it's a bit it's a bit cringe worthy so so i i think i'll probably have somebody else um read to, it to, do the audio when when the time comes but but no we are planning for the second edition right now okay good well mike i thank you very much for coming on for sharing your story for motivating people um and we will put in the show notes links to the uh the challenge that you're doing uh in the summer and your books and your website and your talk i'd love to get the a link to the uh to the talk from the contest that you were in get that uh, to you get that too so i can't thank andrea enough and um i thank you for coming on i hope everything's good up in toronto and you keep motivating and changing the world thank you thank you so much for having me mitch all right thanks mike